tangerines from the absolutely gorgeous Pueblo Magico Bacalar. It sits right next to this beautiful lagoon with all these different colors of blue and green. Which is why it's known as the Lagoon of Seven Colors. You look out and literally just see shades of turquoise and aqua and blue. It's so gorgeous. And it's crystal clear waters too. I am so freaking stoked to show you guys what it is like here in Bacalar. Jordan goes, if I accidentally fall in, I'm going to throw the camera to you. We really need our coffee, so let's go find some breakfast. <laughs> For our stay in Bacalar, we got a private room in a house right on the lagoon. So we have an awesome location and we got that for about 40 bucks a night. But if you want to be in the lagoon in most places... Like 100, 150, depending on the season. <laughs> Yoch! Yeah, so this, this property is really cool. It's like, we, we got a very tiny room, but it's our mm. private room. The beds are super comfortable. And anytime we want, we can go use her kayaks. We're about 20 minutes outside of the center of town. So for, for now, we've just been walking, getting some exercise. Bienvenidos. Gracias. Aquí tiene especialidad de la casa guaraches. Bienvenidos enseguida a los atentos. Gracias. Gracias. Este es chile de habanero, es muy picante. Este es serrano. Y este es el de los chupoteco de mesa. Este no es picante. So this place is called La Piña. And they bring out these sauces with a pineapple leaf as the spoon. <laughs> Aquí tiene cucharitas. Gracias. Y estamos listos. Okay. Dígame. Estos tres huevos especiales con aguacate aparte y tortillas. Y para mí, uh, lo mismo que ayer, bacalareños, por favor, okay. sin cebolla. Gracias. Gracias. My meal was 60 pesos, and with that I got scrambled eggs, rice, beans, avocado. I can't eat the avocado, so I always give it to her. <laughs> and handmade tortillas. And I got something called huevos bacalareños, and I don't know if this is actually bacalarian food, <laughs> if it's a bacalarian dish, but it is magical tasting. It has so much flavor. I forget how much it is. 85. And it's like this huge bowl of scrambled eggs, chaya, and the delicious whatever the heck the red sauce is. I don't even know, but it's so good. I think it's just a play on huevos motaleños, mm -hmm. um, minus the ham, minus the peas. So uh, a totally different dish, yeah. but it is a play on that word but, construct. But it's the, same type of, <laughs> it's the same type of sauce. Ah, maybe. I, I really like it, it back here though. It's like total quiet sanctuary. This is our second time here. They have some live music going on right now. Now, this does often happen in Mexico where a musician will come in, play for the restaurant, and then they just expect uh, like a, some pocket change tips, and we always do that. If they're trying, they're playing music, and it doesn't sound like a cat is being murdered, we give them... <laughs> <laughs> we were just in Tulum, and a guy came up to our table. He was rapping in Spanish about our food and about, about our, us. <laughs> our food. He was like talking about my Mandela tattoo, and I've never heard anyone talk that fast and make stuff up on the spots so we're like hell yeah you deserve this here you go buddy <laughs> the thing i love about that place la piña is besides their food being amazing they have all these smoothies barrachas like drunken smoothies which is just freshly blended goodness of fruit and whatever else plus some type of liquor so you know i'm on board with that <laughs> <laughs> we got one today called a torito which we've had at a veracruz restaurant uh -huh. in puerto morelos and it contains milk peanuts and tequila and a whole bunch of goodness 
But it's like dangerous because we're going there for breakfast and it's hard to like say no to something that great for, what is it, 80 pesos or something? Mm -hmm. 80 pesos each. And, but yeah, it's like, it's kind of early though. <laughs> <laughs> Never too early. <laughs> when we booked our place, we saw that it was supposed to be about 90 degrees and we didn't have air conditioning. We were a little bit nervous about that. In the sun, walking down these streets, it's really, really hot. But then you get in shade or you get by the lagoon and it's much, much cooler. It honestly feels like AC or, I mean, that's like how an evaporative cooler works. It's blowing wind across water and it makes it cooler. So it feels so nice and refreshing being near or by the water. But yeah, in the sun, it just like soaks it right in. It's not the most uncomfortable place staying without AC in this, these temps but I would definitely prefer it. I want to show you guys something really cool. If these things are what I think they are, it is the earliest sign of life on Earth. They're called stromatolites, and although not very pretty looking, they are made up of millions of bacteria. It's kind of like a type of rock. There are only two places in Mexico where these exist. Here in Bacalar, and also in the state Coahuila. So I think that is pretty cool. And just outward appearances, you probably wouldn't think they're that special. One of the many things you can do in Bacalar is kayaking, which I'm doing for some nice quiet time, alone time to think. It's just incredible to be around all this sparkling, gorgeous, diamondy water. If you're anything like me, I was like, why the heck is it so clear where most lakes aren't? Most lakes are murky and kind of gross looking. Well, it is because this is the largest limestone purified lagoon. Basically, the groundwater seeps through the limestone and becomes crystal clear, creating these gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Dang, it is relaxing out here. There's literally no one. There's no one else boating, no one kayaking. Do you hear that? It's nothing. I think I see something. Oh, it's some amigos. Oh, Alaska's scared. Oh, she's scared. <laughs> Hi. You having fun, Alaska? <laughs> she was scared at first, but now she's having a lot of fun. I decided. Put my legs around her, and now she's fine. I used to take her paddle boarding with me. Just like this, she was scared at first, but then after she got used to it, she loved it. And she does know how to swim. We've been looking forward to going to Bacalar for some time now, and I have to say, in no way did it disappoint. Bacalar is amazing. Okay, I know I look like a total ragamuffin right now, or at least that's what my Nana would say. What does that even mean? <laughs> Discombobulated? I don't even know. It's like, do you ever have that, a word that you know how to use it? Like, I know when I look like a ragamuffin. <laughs> but anyway, um, we are headed to dinner right now, to this place we went last night, which is perhaps like top three coolest restaurants I've ever been to, which is why we're going there again. I think we'll probably go there for dinner like every day until we leave. <laughs> <laughs> This is actually one we found online and I couldn't believe it. It had almost 3,000 reviews on Google for, for such, such a, a small town. Yeah, for such a small town. <laughs> but it's called La Playita and they have like this cool maze of wooden planks throughout and goes right up next to the lagoon. Oh, it's so pretty. And then there's this big tree that is like a canopy over the whole thing. It's a very like rainforest cafe, but in real life, the real deal. And the food, oh, and the drinks, oh. And the prices are pretty good too. Like you can get, I mean, pretty good I mean, for on the lagoon. Yeah, right? I would expect it to be like double but, the price of what they actually I mean, are. You can get a plate of tacos for a hundred pesos, give or take. So yeah, it's not, the, it's not the, the cheapest road. tacos ever, but for being on the lagoon, for the location and the ambiance and everything that's going on, it's awesome. One super cool thing about this restaurant is literally attached to it. You have this dock going out to the lagoon. 
This is cool. God, I love Bacalar. <laughs> so we basically ended up just eating cheese for dinner. We had this delicious cheese plate. The cheese plate was one of the most expensive things on the menu, but we couldn't pass it up. We always like to give prices for people like curious about visiting an area so you know what it is, what you could... Well, it's everywhere. What you can afford and how much things are. In our experience, small towns are some of the most affordable, but Bacalar really isn't. Bacalar is probably one of the most expensive small towns we've been to. What we're paying $40 for and what we can get in other places. Ugh, it's cool that it's on the lagoon, but yeah. it's expensive for a tiny room. It's a shared outdoor bathroom. You're sharing it with, I don't even know how many people in one house. And it's a campground, so you're sharing it with like seven or eight tenths of people. And then let's talk about the outdoor shower <laughs> that you're sharing with all of those people too. That you can see right into. You can just look right in. Oh, hey. You do have a beautiful view of the lagoon from here though. And over here, and over here. <laughs> if you're tall enough. <laughs> All right, good morning. We are out on Laguna Bacalar paddleboarding. Yeah, we had to get up at- A little louder? We had to get up at the ass crack of dawn. <laughs> we could see dawn in the sunrise. Oh my gosh, it was so pretty. It is so gorgeous here in Bacalar, especially when you're out on the water. Did you say that this is Isla de Pajaros? No. This is Isla de Pajaros. And it's protected, so we can't get that close. They have buoys protecting it all around. We actually booked this experience through Airbnb. It was about $30 a person, and it includes paddleboarding for like four hours, and some snacks and water. Maddie's coming out of the cenote. So we're in, right now, Cenote Esmeralda, and it is 100 and, no. 70 meters 70 deep. meters deep. You can see so far down in this thing, it's crazy. And it's in the lagoon. A cenote within the lagoon. Now we're at Cenote Negro, and this is shaped like it has a drop off that goes down 170 meters deep. So we can see the edge of it here, and that's it. And then it just goes down to darkness and scary stuff. And the Loch Ness Monster, probably. <laughs> So we just got done with our paddleboarding tour. That was really, really, really fun. I'm going to have the sorest arms of all time tomorrow. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you guys want to do something like this, a paddleboard tour in Bacalar, we're going to put Antonio's information so you can book it. So just $30 right now and he provided like fruit and told us a whole bunch of history about Bacalar. Two thumbs up, five stars, highly recommend. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And now we're going to a breakfast place that our guide recommended. So this restaurant kind of has like a little store where they sell organic products and things like that. And then you come back here and there's like this garden here that's really cool. And there's live music. These guys, I believe they said they're from Argentina. And they've got like a, a guitar player, trombone, flutist, and like a guy on some type of drums. They are really good. <laughs> There's a big ass turkey right here. I have this uncanny ability to communicate with animals, dogs, cats, and turkeys. Before we 
we came here, we were looking at Instagram, seeing what it looked like, and in so many pictures, people were on these swings, which looked like so much fun swinging out over the water. So right now, we're going in search of said swings. Hola, say hi, Alaska. Hi, Alaska. <laughs> We've been paddling for a while now, and we're hoping it's just around the river bend or the Laguna Bend. <laughs> but we're not sure, so wish us luck. I don't know how well you can see this, guys, but this teal water and shades of darker blue, oh, absolutely gorgeous. gorgeous. Alaska approved. We found swings! The water keeps it from being a very swingy swing. <laughs> you guys for a little bit. Is it like having your head out of the car window, Laska? Laska, you are adorable with your one paw up. Time of your life. <laughs> we are exhausted after that long kayaking stint. Uh, so It seems like a good idea going there. And then the going back, it was more windy. Your arms just get so tired. <laughs> But now we have to go replenish, Whoa. and this road is really bumpy. Replenish our calories. We are going to the fort, the fort of protecting Bacalar from pirates. So behind me is the Fuerte de San Felipe, or the fort. This is where they would look out over the waters and see if pirates were coming. If you are a foreigner, it's, what was it, a hundred and... A little over hundred pesos. Little over a hundred pesos. If you're from Mexico, it is going to be 52. So we're just gonna go ahead and pass because I do believe recording isn't allowed in there anyway. But this is a place where you can go to get panoramic views of Bacalar. So if you're interested in seeing the water is from way up high, and then I recommend coming here. All right guys, so we love Bacalar. We absolutely love this place. And we would definitely vacation here. I think it would be a bit too expensive for us to live here. Especially but. given the options that I saw available online for like monthly rentals are just kind of Outrageous for what you're actually getting and, and, and speaking of online rentals if you're booking an Airbnb Be careful and make sure you're actually booking one in Bacalar because there's some nearby towns and some of those listings Those people are trying to make you think you're booking a place in Bacalar and you're not and if you're thinking Oh my gosh Bacalar looks amazing and I want to go there first of all. I don't blame you <laughs> uh, But please hear this if you want to come to Bacalar, please hear this. We saw something that I think is so true and it said Bacalar is as fragile as it is beautiful and it is beautiful. But there's some stuff that we think is really important for tourists to know when coming here. Like for instance, wear natural sunscreen. Don't wear the like spray on chemically stuff. It's bad for your body. It's super bad for Bacalar Lagoon. Don't touch anything like the stromatolites that I told you about. Yeah, don't stand on them. Don't touch them. It'll kill them. And as our guide Antonio told us, those are the lungs of the lagoon. So they like purify everything that's coming into the lagoon. One of the reasons why the water is so clear. Yeah. Something else if you can, choose paddle boards, choose kayaks, choose wind sailboats. sailboats. Don't choose boats. The, the boats are so polluting. We were talking to our host and apparently locals are trying to organize something where there's like one day a week where boats aren't allowed on the lake and hopefully that will increase to more days a week where they aren't because they're doing such terrible things to it. Each time a motorized boat would drive by, we could smell the fumes. If you're going to get a motorized boat oh, out here, yeah. at least get a clean burning engine. Come on. I'm not trying to lecture, but all I'm trying to say is if you want this to look like this when you get here, then try to take care of it and encourage others to do the same thing. Locals here are really pushing to keep it clean and to treat it with respect. If you know someone who would love to visit Bacalar, please share this video with them. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. 
Please subscribe to our channel to see our upcoming adventures. We are going to Mahawal, which some people say is even better than Bacalar. I don't know how that's possible, but we shall see. <laughs> oh, one more thing. Gong that bell, so you can notify the next time we put out a new video. And we will see you in Mahawal.